What's up guys? Cody Martens here with Luminary Agent and I am here today with a very special guest, Tiffany Danley. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank Say you. hi to the kids at home. Hi everyone. <laughs> so uh, Tiffany uh, actually uh, works in the same brokerage that I just joined, Keller Williams here in right. Portland. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, I actually knew about Tiffany before I joined KW because Taught a couple of classes here, and people always shout oh, you out because oh, you're so great that's right, on yeah. social media. I always want to help you teach those classes, don't I? I'm like, can I say something? And then I'm like, yes, you may. Uh. <laughs> yep, I am. I am by no means like the you know know it all oh. at uh, anything. Like everybody's got their experience, right? Yeah, that's true. So, but uh, she does a really great job on social media. Um, she's great with Instagram, Facebook, and specifically Instagram stories. I feel like you really like. Yeah, I love stories. Yeah, you yeah. really rock those out. So I wanted to have her uh, on the show today so that we could talk about that because obviously that's what I do and it's what I talk about. So uh, I'm super excited. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get right into it. So. Uh, First of all, uh, why don't you tell us just a little bit about like your background, um, what you did before real estate, okay. and then take us through you know how long you've been in the business, um, what kind of business you're doing now, and then we'll get into some of more of the. Yeah, so just like, you All know, right. two minute bio. All right, two, two minutes. Okay, here oh, we go. You, I'm timing. Okay. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I worked as a project coordinator for a construction company, um, basically admin stuff for about five years. Okay. Um, I got married. Um, we wanted to buy a house, so I stayed working there until we could buy a house because, as you know, <laughs> banks don't give you money if you quit your job. So I stay there. Rude. Want to buy a home. And then I quit. <laughs> To become a real estate agent and work commission only, which I don't advise everyone to do if you just bought a house, but that is what I did. Um, did I, you have like a nest egg saved up or anything when you made the plunge, or were you just like, peace? I just had a husband. <laughs> <laughs> One of us was working. Yeah, great. Uh, no, I just I just made the plunge and just figured I would do it. No one told me that I couldn't, and no one told me it was hard. But I have, well, I mean. It's tough, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, like anything, you have to work at it. Yeah. Right? It doesn't <laughs> I, just happen. You know, I got in in 2013 when the market was, you know, um, rebounding and coming back. So I think that I got in in a really good time, and I just started hustling and working and doing open houses, and and business started to show up. And um, quickly after that, <laughs> I became pregnant, um, which was great, but also. Um, after I had been in the business for a year, I had a, a small child. So one of the things that I had to do was, you know, be a real estate agent and um, with my small and mom. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't afford not to work. Yeah. Like my husband working covered the mortgage, but didn't really give us enough. That now that we had another uh, person to feed, didn't give us enough. So I had to work while still having my small child. So I basically took her everywhere with me. I was mommy realtor. I was, I called myself a hot mess all the time <laughs> and was in my, you know, messy bun, Keeping had my baby real. on me, but selling real estate. And yeah. I felt like people really, um, they, they understood that. I don't know. If they almost bonded to they it. Bond, I feel yeah, like, yeah. you know, cause they're like, I, yeah. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> right? I was like, you moms with all your kids like driving you crazy. Let's go find you a house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the year after I had my daughter, I had a client like seven clients who were pregnant, and <laughs> I was like, okay, like that's just what we're gonna do. Yeah. Um, though that was probably a pretty hard year because you know working with pregnant ladies. You know, yeah. I mean, I was one, so I can say that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so since then, I've just been growing my business. Um, uh, having my daughter as you know, I brought her with me all the time until I could afford to put her into daycare and then my business really kind of took off. And then a year or so later, my husband was really unhappy with his job. He left his job. And so I've been the sole provider um, for two and a half years now. That's awesome. So six years total in the business and a solo agent and I have an admin who works kind of 
a couple hours a day, but just kind of growing my business off of my off of my database and on social media mm -hmm. and um, kind of through open houses and stuff. Cool. Yeah. So your business primarily comes from your database referrals yeah. and then oh, you have a component that's like open houses. Yeah. So I do open houses kind of to just get that quick business yeah. to keep that kind of that lever going because I feel like um, sphere and social media is just kind of like a slow burn you just have to keep putting into mm -hmm. that and it produces but whenever I feel like I'm getting a little slow or I want some new clients I go do some open houses to get some business moving that's awesome yeah. how big is your database I would say I would say it's probably 500 cool but that also has like vendors and contractors in it and stuff so mm -hmm. it's probably smaller than that yeah well plus then i i think nowadays too your database also encompasses everybody you're interacting with on social media too right yeah so like yeah. you maybe you have an email list of a certain number of people but mm -hmm. if you've got a thousand friends on yes. facebook yes Absolutely. Right, like yeah. that are, and yeah. at least a good portion of those are seeing your personal posts on yes. your on yeah. your personal profile. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so I probably have eight hundred on my you know regular Facebook page. Yeah, however, a thousand on my Instagram. Um, so, if I get in conversation with those people, I try to get their email address yeah. and phone number so that I can put them into my database and do the nurturing, do the email campaigns. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of times that. Part of my follow-up system is just spending time on Facebook, responding to messages on Facebook and on Instagram. Yeah. And they don't they don't ever convert over to an actual email into my into my CRM until they've actually decided to work until with me. Until they're actually a client. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Until yeah, they're actually like, okay, now I'm ready to buy mm -hmm. a house. Then they. But convert. that's the the power of social media, mm -hmm. right? Is that you can have these, you can engage with and nurture and build this relationship with your clients before you even ever have their phone number or their email address. Yeah, that's right, yeah, you know? absolutely. And that's really cool. So when did you start um, kind of using social media in your business? Was it right from the start? Did you like it beforehand? Tell me how that kind of came about. Um, I would say that in 2017, so I started in 2013 and you know, I had a business page and I wasn't really on Instagram, but I was on Facebook. Um, but I would say in 2017, I really decided, I think I was listening to some Gary Vee and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And he was just saying that like- Like you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gary Vee knows all, he just yeah. do what he says. Yeah. Yep. Um, and he was just basically, basically saying that, you know, the future is social media. This is the way that relationships are going to be built. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to go all in on that because I, you know, I, I don't want a door knock and I don't want a cold call. Mm -hmm. Um, so what else, what else is there and what else can I, what else can I do? That's not what everyone has already been doing. So what's yeah. something new that I can just go all in on? So I think that was 2017 where I'm like, okay, I'm going to post you know, every other day consistently on Facebook, on my business mm -hmm. page. Um, <laughs> the old Facebook business the page. Old, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't know it then. I was looking back. Like, so now I post on my business page. I have a decent amount of people who follow it. And I get like a couple likes and like 100 to 200 views and stuff. And yeah. I, I'm like, that's great. But I was looking back to like 2016, 17. I used to post like just crap stuff. And I get like 400 views, like all these likes from yeah. people I didn't know. It's, it's, it's sad. It's, it's yeah. Like I just can't get yeah. that organic reach anymore. Yeah. Well, so. it's just so much. Com there's so many brands and people competing for the attention in yeah. the news feed, and there's only so much real estate space, right? Uh -huh. I mean, that has real become. Estate. I know. I love. I love equating it to that because it's true. Yeah. It's become like Manhattan real estate. Yeah. The news feed has you been. Have to pay for you have to pay. Yeah. You can't just like saunter in anymore. That's true. You know, and, yeah. and just kind of show up. So that's been a big change with the business pages for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. So, but I also think that there's an opportunity there to really, in this day and age that we have now, we can go so much more personal yeah. and that's actually of benefit to us. Yeah. So it's nice that we can go personal in our personal profiles, yes. you know, and, mm -hmm. and still get that organic reach. Mm -hmm. Uh, it might not be with uh, this open house thing, but yeah. 
you know, no. that's cool. My open house, I still post open house, I just can't get over it, right? I feel yeah. like. I, it's it's like, on my checklist. It's a duty, yeah, it is on my checklist. It's a duty yep. of a realtor to post her open house yeah. on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, even though like nobody likes it. I can't help it. Yeah, I'm compelled, I'm compelled to do it. Yeah. That's so great. <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about um, how, so that's when you kind of got into it. Tell me about like what kind of plan did you put in place when you said, okay, it's 2017, I'm going all in, like this is the thing I'm gonna do. So what transpired, you know, to actually, what action steps did you take? Um, hmm. I don't know that I actually put a plan in place. I don't really like to do plans. Yeah. Like, oh, boring. Four letter P word. Plans. It's like time block. <laughs> um, I think I just started committing myself to find content and, and to, to post it. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, I think I was just sharing articles, which I would never do now. But yeah. I would just share articles or post stuff about houses. Oh, that's when I also started, like, started um, taking pictures too. I mean, okay. that was one of the things I, I bought one of those. Now everyone has them, right? But one of those signs that say sold on them. Mm -hmm. And I would always go when my clients closed and took a picture of them with the sold sign or mm -hmm. them at closing or just taking pictures through things that were happening in my business and in yeah. posting those. Yeah. Um, kind of like a day, day in the life behind the scenes type thing. Yeah. And I was posting those on Facebook on, yeah, just on Facebook, on my business, on my business page. Yeah, and this was before stories or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember people used to tell me like, oh, that's so cute. I've never seen that done before with the sold. Mm -hmm. and now it's, yeah, like yeah. I said, now, now every, everyone's yeah. doing it. Now everybody does and it. And everyone has yep. theirs branded and yep. yeah, but, um, and I, everyone loved, loved that, thought it was so cute. The clients loved it. They would share it yeah. on their Facebook and tag me. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I would, you know, then I would be on their Facebook mm -hmm. as well yeah and people would see that I'm on their Facebook so no need to um, actually post on my personal page and say hey I'm a realtor my clients were doing it for yeah. me the best kind of yeah. promotion is not self-promotion yeah. but when someone yeah. else is doing it for you exactly. it's that like earned media mm -hmm. right yeah yeah that's awesome so uh, you shared with me before we started recording that now you do kind of have more of a yes kind of a schedule so Let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, actually before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the types of stuff that you're posting on social media now. Okay. So we talked a little bit about like a couple years ago what you were posting. Right. And now let's, let's talk a little bit about the kind of stuff that you like to post, mm -hmm. what works, okay. what stuff you don't think works as much anymore. Right, um, so definitely, what doesn't work anymore is will open house posts. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Um, and sharing articles, not just because of the algorithm. Facebook doesn't like it when you're, you know, trying to push them off to another site, and that's what you're doing. Yeah. When you're posting um, a link to a, an article. Yeah. Uh, so not only does Facebook. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, not only do they not like it. But no one wants to read that. Like no yeah. one wants to read about interest rates. No one wants to read what CNN Money has to say about I don't know, like yeah. the housing, whatever. Well, and really, the stats I, about it. I feel like that's just a way for you to check the box, right? To make something. you feel like I posted yeah. something. Yeah. But it's not that you're actually posting something that's going to get engagement or is actually going to bring value to yeah. somebody, which is the real goal of it all, yeah. right? Yeah. So what what can you provide that? or what can you post that adds value? And I feel like as real estate agents, we find that very hard. Yeah. Like we're really good at talking face-to-face <laughs> -to -face and providing value, but figuring out what to post on a social, social yeah. that's fun is very hard for us. Yeah. We like to talk about numbers and we like to talk about process. Yeah. It can be very boring. Super true. Um, so what I post now is I spent some time, probably a year ago, a couple months ago, really getting into, probably for two years now, I've been not only posting, but really getting into branding okay. and who I am, who I am or who Tiffany Danley Real Estate Group is as a brand, mm -hmm. who my customers are and what they want from me. So I had to spend some time actually researching and figuring that out. Um, and based on, based on that, then I was trying to, then from there, figure out 
what they wanted to see from me. Right. Like, what are those people? And so basically I found that like, um, you know, I live in Beaverton, I have a four year old. I feel like a lot of my clients are just in that demographic with mm -hmm. me. And so those are my clients. So they're soccer moms, they're, they're families with young kids. So what do they want to see? What do they, what provides value? And luckily, um, I can come up with those things because what provides value for me? Because I'm in that demographic. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is great because it's uh, this, okay, what you like have just said is I think such a key, key component yeah. of actually succeeding, uh, not only in social media, but just any kind of marketing yeah. in general. Exactly. You took the time mm -hmm. to say, who is my audience? Yes. And what do they want from me? What do they want from me? Not what yes. do I want from them. Yes. Right? I don't, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I, well, guess what? Nobody cares. <laughs> no. Right? Everybody is thinking about themselves, themselves and how to make their own lives easier. Yeah. So it's like if you want somebody to, to see you, to mm -hmm. pay attention to you, give them a reason. Right. Right? And I, I applaud you for that because it really is such an important step that nobody sits down and actually, and it, you're drawing a line in the sand too. Right. Because by saying this is who I want to work with, right. you're also saying this is who I don't want to work with. with. Yeah. And that's a hard thing hard for people do. in sales to yeah, especially really- Especially when you first started too. For, yeah, to think about like, I'm going to be saying no to business, yeah. right? But there's an opportunity cost. With every yes, there's always a no, right. whether you know it or not. You're mm -hmm. always saying no. Right. And so if you're gonna say yes to the things that you don't really want, you're gonna end up saying no to things that you might actually want to do and people that you might actually want to enjoy, exactly. right? Yeah, totally So agree. that, it just, I think that's awesome. And I think that's really great. So. Tell me a little bit about who that demographic is. I mean, you shared a little bit, mm -hmm. just barely, and then tell us about how that is informing your content and the kind of content you're creating for for those those you know mom moms soccer moms with four year olds. Yeah, it. soccer mom four year olds. Yeah, um, my daughter just signed up for soccer. So I'm now officially, <laughs> officially soccer, a soccer, soccer mom. mom. <laughs> what a cool one. Not just saying it for fun. Yeah. Um, so that demographic um, is busy. They have young kids. Um, they're either, the kids are probably at home with mom or they're at a daycare and everyone's life is really busy. Yeah. So I have to think about what I'm sharing and um, even what I'm giving for pop buys and stuff has to be, um, has to be easy, has to be easy to consume, has to be, has to add, add value. So I really like to post about um, fun things for kids to do that that's also free. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. not as much, but when, when I was doing it probably last year, I would just take footage of parks that I go to and let people know where they are. Um, I'm a part of a lot of Facebook moms groups and they, always want to know where splash pads this time of your splash pads yeah. and I'm like I need a list of splash pads I need to do that it's on my checklist yeah um, where are all the where are all the good parks um, where can I get things for free like um, we'll go to events that are free so and I know for me like where can I bring my four-year-old won't have to pay a bunch of money that will make her really tired so she'll sleep tonight <laughs> yeah so I know other moms want that they yeah. want to they want to know how to keep keep their house efficient um, you know, reduction of energy costs. They want contractors. Like if they want to do something to the yard, they want to know like where to get that stuff. Like where's the closest nursery. They want to know a lot about schools. So I know that posting about schools or where to find information about schools, posting about the neighborhoods, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you're just being that value. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just providing so much value there. And yeah. how do you feel like that translates into getting more real estate business? Mm, I think it has to do with being a neighborhood expert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I live in Beaverton. I've sold all over the metro area, but you know, Beaverton and Hillsborough and Tigard, I grew up in Tigard, um, I know those the best. And so mm -hmm. I'm always posting content and those are the areas that I'm at, right? So I'm always yeah. posting content about that. So people are gonna know that, you know, Tiffany knows Beaverton and she knows Tigard and you know parks and schools and um, convenience to shopping are all play in home value so if I know where those are and how they yeah. affect home value then 
I'm going to know how to sell your house. Well, and I actually think we're really lucky as realtors in the fact that we can be local because it means we can go deep. Yeah. You know, like you can know all of those things yeah. and you can actually even like get get more defined and then yeah. go really deep Absolutely. into something and just super know it well. Mm -hmm. And and I think we're lucky in that regard whereas if we were just selling some product online yeah. and our clients are just mm -hmm. everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then you have to get so narrow focused with the audience right. because your geographic area is so huge. Yes. You know, yeah. and I think we're lucky that we can really pump that community community piece. Yeah, I love that too. I love being part of the community. Um, I love knowing more just for myself as well. Like, yeah. I want to know all that community stuff as well because <laughs> yeah. I live there. Yeah. So it's important to me as well. And then I, I don't know, there's another part of it where I can make friends and build relationships. Um, and that's what I also want for myself. I mean, yeah. honestly, like, I will sell wherever my clients want me to sell. If they want to live in Gresham, I'll help them buy in Gresham, but you know, I'm just not going to know that market as well. I'm not going to know yeah. all the neighborhoods and stuff. Yeah. Um, we just I guess can't spread myself that. Totally. Then yeah. Portland's so big now and has it is. like I know, it really is. It doesn't take 20 minutes to get everywhere now no, where I used to. It does yeah. not. It takes 45 at least. 45. Exactly. <laughs> That's like the new magic number, yeah, right? 45. Oh god. So uh, tell me a little bit about the um, content that you're posting. We yeah. talked a little bit uh, before we started recording. You showed me that you kind of have mm -hmm. a, a rough calendar, quote unquote, yes. kind of some themes. Um, and then you told me a little bit about some of the types of content that you post that makes, a, like that actually does really well. So let's talk, yeah. a, I okay. mean, share that that piece of it too for just a minute because I thought it was really thoughtful and really interesting and I also was surprised at at the same time how loose it still kind of was yeah you know and I thought that was great so let's yeah. let's talk about that a bit um, so along with like my branding and thinking about who my client is I then went through the year and each month I tried to make a theme for each month and then within the weeks of the the broad theme there's content that I'm gonna post about or talk about or share about. This is a little bit new for me because I've always been kind of like loose about it. A mm -hmm. lot of it is just sharing about my day and what's happening and stuff. And so this year I've tried to be a little bit more purposeful. Mm -hmm. Purp purf Purposeful. Oh no. Purposeful. Purposeful, thanks. For those who can't see me, I am blonde. Oh gosh. Um, so um, focusing on what people want to hear from me and really making an active um, push to actually drive people back to the content that I'm posting instead of just posting and hoping people see it. So like for example, I've chosen July as family fun and vacation because that's what everyone's doing right now. Right. I mean, Probably even less people are buying homes right now because, yeah. I mean, I'm going on vacation. Yeah. I think there was no one at the team meeting. All the realtors <laughs> on vacation. Yeah. So, no. Everybody is peaced yeah, out. No one's <laughs> buying a house this weekend. But what are they doing? They're at the coast thinking about what if I could buy a vacation house here and how would I do that? Yeah. So in the past month, two months, I've actually gotten three of my past clients reaching out to me about vacation homes and I've never had that before, actually. like. Never in my six years has anyone reached out to me about vacation homes. So I'm like, oh, now is the time where people start thinking about that. Yeah. So I was like, well, how can I, you know, provide more information on vacation homes? So I can obviously do a video and talk about the, the how and the why and stuff like that. But what are other things that have to do with vacation homes that I can post and like home protection? Um, what do you do when you're not at your vacation home? Or what right. do you do when you're on vacation for your own home and like right. smart houses and stuff like that? So how can I make this big theme? and then create content out of it and then use where I am or what I'm doing. So I'm going to the coast. That's so easy for me to talk about what vacation homes down there yeah. and what it's like to buy a vacation home down there. Um, so it, it also plays into my lifestyle. And then I can think about themes like, so in September we're gonna do a back to school theme. Um, and we can talk about new routines. We can talk about schools during that time. How are you choosing your school? Yeah. Right? And then I can talk about school ratings and neighborhoods and stuff like that. Um, so each month has, has a theme about it. So then, um, so I have my themes. 
So then what And exactly, you sat down at the yeah. beginning of the year mm -hmm. and and planned all that out, right? Yeah. Like sat down, took an afternoon, glass of wine, yes. a couple of cliff bars and much needed glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. That's how I get most of the creativity. Glass and glass and yeah. glass. Yep. It's a bottle, but you know, yep. we have the glass to keep it classy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, that's what I did. And I, and when I was going through the themes of the months, I was thinking about like what normally happens and what our family is thinking about that time. Like what's happening in the new year? Like in the new year, we talk about our goals. And mm -hmm. so a lot of people's goal, like New Year's resolution, is to buy a house. So what a perfect time to talk about financing, budgeting, saving, yeah. like, and how to buy a house. Like that's going to be the month where I talk about that. Man, it's so smart and so simple, mm -hmm. you know. You're not making it this big, like, huge, complicated thing. Right. And so those calendar... Uh, those ideas then you take and that becomes your cap your social media content mm -hmm. kind of down to the week right yes yeah and so then I have my themes for each week so the overall theme is just everything that I can talk about like in my stories and just in, in general about anything I want to post but then each week also has its own like little theme in there so I can, that has more to do with the content piece I'm producing that week so each week actually has a content piece, whether it's a blog or a video or something like that. Okay. And so then, like a bigger mm -hmm. piece of content. Right. And then everything else I'm doing throughout that week on my stories would be funneling back to that content piece. So like at the end of the year, you've got 52 yeah. blog posts slash videos. Mm -hmm. Are yeah. those the main two formats, like a video or a blog post? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really, yeah. that's like written or written, yeah, or video. And then know. all my posts on my Instagram page, because you could, I guess, those are content pieces too. My, so all micro, pieces. micro uh -huh. Uh -huh, are then um, talking about the theme or pushing back to the content. Like, you know, if you want to know more about vacation homes, and there's a picture of me and my daughter at, at the beach. Um, go click on the link in my bio and you can see the full video. So it's trying to move people back to that content yeah. that I've created as well. And that's strategic that I haven't done before. But you're also still using yourself to do that. Yes. Which I think is really awesome. Talk a little bit about the, your, like your actual mm -hmm. like Instagram grid. We'll just use it as an example yeah. because that is a piece of it. Um, so tell me a little bit about like the content that you put on that, the types of photos that you do and how that then feeds back to that like bigger piece. Right. Um, so I've been trying to really focus on Instagram. I still use Facebook and I use my Facebook business page, but I'm starting to post a little bit different things. So Instagram is all about the beautiful photo um, and getting people to stop the scroll to look at what you're, mm -hmm. what you're posting. So whereas before I posted photos of other, other things, maybe houses or other things that I'm looking at. But recently I've started to bring that focus back to myself and po posting pictures of, my, of myself, mm -hmm. um, which, yeah, it's very nerve wracking <laughs> because <laughs> you're having to take and post fi pictures of yourself and you're trying to be, and sometimes it feels like you're just saying like, hey, look at me. Yeah. Um, but if I go and look back, and I've heard this so many times listening to other people talk about what photos get the most engagement, it's always gonna be photos of yourself or well, photos of your mm -hmm. kid. Like she gets more likes than I do. Yeah. But, um, so that's, because people, it's how we, it's how we stay in touch with each other now, yeah. you know. So it's like, it, it's the, it's the way of being like, oh, it's nice to see your smiling face, and I'm now I'm seeing it on Instagram. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. So the, what I do basically is, I'm taking pictures kind of throughout what I'm what I'm doing when I have a chance to, uh, post, post pictures. Like I have some of me at an open house when it, when there's no one there, and mm -hmm. I set up my tripod and I take some <laughs> photos of me, and it's real awkward. Yeah. But no one can see me do it. <laughs> um, and then I have pictures of me like doing behind the stuff seeing stuff at home and I have pictures I do have pictures of my clients still with the, yeah with the sold because you know people like to see those yeah. as well a happy family that just yeah bought a house um, but like smiling face right smiling face. like yeah it like, always is gonna do it's really all well. about my brand so I'm trying to build my brand and my brand is also happy homeowners <laughs> um, and a lot of times they have kids so let's get the kids in there too yeah like because I help families buy homes yeah um, and so I'm taking these pictures and they're on my phone and then I move them over to my my um, software that I used to 
post on Instagram, which is later. Uh -huh. So my automatic scheduled postings. And later lets you schedule them in a calendar format, basically, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And yes. then it looks like it also shows you a preview of, of what your feed. grid is yeah. going to look like yeah. for however long you have it scheduled yeah. out. Yeah. So yeah, if I weren't, if I didn't change anything, this is what it would look like if, when they all come. Okay. When they all post. That's awesome. Um, so we'll that's to, nice. I'll make sure I link that in the show notes because yeah. that's a really great one. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about exactly how my grid looks. Yeah. Because, um, like I said, I'm not an influencer, and I think the grids that are so pre-planned where everything is the same color and stuff like that's not interesting anymore. It looks nice. Yeah. But that's not interesting content. Well, I think me. it looks nice kind of like a logo looks nice, right. but it's not very real and no, authentic, it's not real. you know? Mm -mm. I'm like, I know that you like yeah. seriously pre-plan this, you yeah. know? And if I were to look at your newsfeed, like before you told me, I wouldn't have thought that, oh, she planned this out like a month in advance. Like, you know, yeah, like a lot of this stuff that. has been really planned out because it just looks, it's, you've made it look effortless. You know? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is interesting sitting there at my computer and having all these photos of me that I took a week or two ago. Yeah. And then thinking about how I'm going to use these photos to talk about different things for the month going forward. Yeah. So, how I mean, how many photos do you take? Like, do you try to take photos every single day? Do you try to block out some time a, few, a couple times a week where you are taking these photos? Like, tell me a little bit about, like, the actual, like, execution part. Um, most of the time I just kind of take them when I feel like it or yeah. if I feel like there's something that I know that, well, mostly when I've gotten dressed and done my hair and makeup is <laughs> mostly when I'm going to, I'm like, oh, today I did my I'd hair and makeup, so fair. today is going to be a day that I'll take some I'd photos. i that's fair. <laughs> um, I would say when I know that I'm going to be doing something that I feel like could make some content. So like in one of them, I'm working on my open house sign i have this big sign and i post stuff on it and my daughter was helping me and i'm like oh, okay and even though at that time i not have hair and makeup i was pretty <laughs> i mean i just woken up and was working on it but that's so authentic like that's yeah. me with my daughter working on something that's real estate yeah. so i so in that case i asked my husband to snap a photo because i couldn't get my tripod up and he did an okay job. It's some filters, some editing. It was okay. He takes the worst photos. Um, and then some of the stuff I just snap on the go. Like um, when I have time, some of it's like after a photo day at, um, at a house I was listing. You know, it's right. staged. It's beautiful. So why not Take use this opportunity the scene, right? to like do a little posing and yeah. sitting and. It's weird because like when you're doing it, it feels so weird. But when you see it on other people's feed or when you see them just sitting there in front of their computer or whatever, yeah. it looks natural. Like it, it looks so natural. You don't think about the process that went yeah. behind it for them to take that photo. They probably took 50 of them and, and that was the best one. And they probably feel weird too. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But when I see other people's, I'm like, oh. She just looks like she's sitting there doing some work. Yeah. <laughs> no wrinkles or anything, but she just looks great. <laughs> right? Uh, she got a little touch-up done in the yeah, post-production, yeah. but... <laughs> so I, I try to think of that. Like, I did some at the open house I was at because there was no one there. And um, I, I know that sometimes open houses can be very busy or sometimes they can be really slow. So I yeah. try to think of what I can do during those times. And so that's a lot of times when I actually do my videos and stuff, too, is like... Oh, I guess this is going to be a slow one today, but let me use this house that I'm in, the perfect background, because we're not going to use my house. It's like not, it's not <laughs> cleaned up. Um, not but cute. I can go to this other house that's staged and, yeah. you know, take my photos, photos there. Yeah. Uh huh. And then so I have this, this, like a whole bunch of photos. And so then I take my photos and they're, they're in later already. And then I think about what I'm going to post and how I can use that photo and, um, Think about what I can say about that photo that talks about. So you got like a, a like a grid of here's all my available photos. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to schedule it, yeah. and here's what I'm going to say about it. Yeah. And stuff too. And then like something else that I did. So I knew that like July was going to be um, themed um, vacation and stuff. So then yeah. I went back through all like Google. The Google Photos is where mm -hmm. it goes from my phone. To okay. The, right. Yeah. So then I went back and picked all my photos from the beach or from vacations that we went on or on the mountain stuff. Anywhere where I could think this could be a vacation home spot for most yeah. people. 
and I moved those o o over. So those are old photos. Like those are from a couple years ago, but like no one knows, no one cares. I don't yeah. have to put Throwback Thursday on it. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And so I can use those photos that have just been sitting around because I have those already. Yeah. So. Wow, that's yeah. really awesome. Or like we were doing like planting and gardening, and so my daughter was out playing the sprinkler and was watering her plant. So I took a picture of it, and I knew specifically that I was going to use it to talk about my blog on gardening. So. That's awesome. So you've got, I mean, it really shows that having that year pre-planned, mm -hmm. you're thinking, I mean, you're thinking months in advance yeah. almost, mm -hmm. you know? Like what is some stuff that I can take now oh, this will be great for that thing I have planned in six weeks or yeah. whatever. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And that seems like it makes a big difference too because yeah. you just seem to be like kind of churning it, you know, in your head. Yeah. So I can either go on here and post everything out for a month, which I would like to do. Um, and I do it sometimes. And sometimes I get super busy actually yeah. selling the houses <laughs> and I don't get a chance to sit down and post, post them out. <laughs> but at least I have all these photos and then I can just still go on Instagram because I'm taking photos throughout knowing what my theme is. And if mm -hmm. I feel like I haven't posted for a while and people need to hear from me, then I can just still take that photo and just post it right on Instagram because I have photos that I'm going to use for my theme already. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about now how all of this actually plays into yeah. real estate. How do I get business? How do you get business? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wonder. Um, <laughs> What is it all for? <laughs> yeah, some days, right? Like, yeah. Why do I even wake up? Um, so I do not use Facebook and Instagram. I don't buy leads. I don't. I don't pay for. I don't pay for ads. Um, I just. I really like to build organically. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that my idea for posting on Instagram and on Facebook is so that I can nurture. Um, I guess the people that I already know mm -hmm. or my, my sphere or my database or wherever that is. So yeah. my goal really is like if I'm going to an event um, and I'm meeting people, I'm trying to also friend them or follow them on Instagram, yeah. depending on their age bracket. Yeah, totally. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because like the gen, one of the gen Xers yeah. are going to be Facebook and the millennials are going to be on Instagram. Yeah. Um, so. I try to nurture relationships that way. So I, it's only been one or two that have come out, come found me because they're like, oh, I didn't know you from before. And I saw you on Facebook or I saw you on Instagram. Right. Um, and didn't know me from before at all. But um, also, I feel like that's a really, that ask is so low and so easy. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, are you on Instagram? What's your Instagram handle? Right? Yeah, because everyone that's wants a, attention on Instagram. That's a super easy thing yeah. to do versus like, what's your phone number? Or give me your oh, email God. address, yeah. right? That you're like, mm, no. what are you trying to sell me? Yeah. You know, but nope. like, it's just such an easy, effortless question, yeah. you know? Like, oh, let's be friends on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's, simple. Yeah, so great. Like last year, last summer, I went to this like girls retreat put on put on by someone who was on Instagram. She was from California. She did a retreat up here. And I was like, I'm just going to go to this. And I yeah. went to it and all those people there knew of this person through Instagram. They followed her on Instagram and they shared everyone in that retreat, which was probably like 30 people Instagrams. And mm -hmm. so I went and followed them all and most of them followed me back. And since then I've done, I've sold three houses to people who, wow. Yeah. And they would have not remembered me at all if, we, if, if I hadn't, you know, followed them on Instagram and now they're watching my stories and watching what I do. Like some now that it was just like, oh, I saw that you're taking on new clients and that your leg is getting better. I broke my leg. Um, <laughs> would you would you be willing to meet with me? Like yeah. that's so great. Yeah. Mm, I think yeah. so. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty yeah. Kind I, of yeah, busy. I just check like no, my like, schedule right yes, now. Yes, please. <laughs> well, and I love that story. I think is such a testament to social media because. Uh, people get to know, like, and trust yeah. you, like, long before you have their phone number and email address. Yes. Long before you know about yeah. them, they know about you. Yes. So by the time they do come to you, th I mean, it's done. Yeah. It's done, yeah. right? Like, it's already happened. They've already decided they're going to work with me. They've I love that because then I don't decided. have to convince them. I don't have to make those awkward phone calls or those texts. You're like, hey, remember me from that open house? Yeah. Like, that sucks. Yeah. Um, I do it, but it, yeah. it's not as fun as... 
Yeah, so if, I mean, that would be my preferred way if I could go to a social event, which realtors are supposed to go to the social events, but yeah. then like somehow you're supposed to get phone numbers and email from that, which is weird. <laughs> yeah. um, but if you make some kind of like, like the other day I went to Bunko with all these girls mm -hmm. and like then a couple of them friended me on Facebook. So I'm like, sweet. Yeah. Now they're going to start seeing my stuff on Facebook and know I'm a realtor and we're going to have a yep. relationship yep. that way. And then I'm also going to see them in person. I'm never going to have, have to ask them for an email or phone number. Yeah. And then they're going to remember me when they want to buy or sell. But so much, one thing that I think you crush it at and I applaud you so much for this is you are like 100% I think your authentic self on social media it is so much it's just it's just so so you right like your journey about how you broke your leg you know like you being at the gym like you hired a trainer and so there's yeah. stuff about you at the gym it's just about the things in your life that that are important to you yeah. that give people a reason to know I like, can trust you and they they kind of get you interested in your story that right. is your life mm -hmm. and it's not all real estate no you know yeah. and I just think that's so I think that's so key because the question that I get asked so often is what what to post right. like I don't know what I'm supposed to post and I'm like it just document like just mm -hmm. share your life yeah. you know where do you like to go for coffee in the morning? Yeah. You know, did yeah. you eat a, are you vegan? And did you eat a, a <laughs> vegan sausage patty for breakfast and you love this brand? Yeah. You know, like just, I mean, there's just, our, our day is full of content, stuff that we could do, yeah. you know? Yeah, people love seeing behind the scenes stuff. That's why reality TV is so popular. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll post, like, I'll post stuff about parks. Like I said before, I'll be mm -hmm. with my daughter and then I'll just get messages well, this is story stuff because I love the stories. I'll just get messages yeah. from people about like, hey, where's that park at? Um, and then we've started a conversation. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then they're following me because I provided content that they like. And, yeah. then, and then in the next story, they see that I'm at my, I'm at a house that I'm selling, you know. Right. So, right. So then they've seen that too. Yep. So for me, like stories are so key because I get almost 200 people watching those. And I feel like those people who have been on Instagram longer or more committed have so many more people watching our opportunity. So every day there's 200 people watching me that I can speak to about real estate and just me as a person, you know, plus the people who are seeing me on Facebook stories, which is a lot less like 50, but then, so mm -hmm. that's, but the two different groups of people, right? So 250 people, um, tune in to watch to see what I have to say a day. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can choose to conversate with them. Like that's huge. Like, yeah. Think how long it would take for me to call that many people and <laughs> yeah. have a conversation on the phone, which is terrible. Yeah. Like no one wants to do that. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And and you can have that conversation with them wherever they are in their day when they happen to be watching those. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Instagram stories because I think that that's like your from what I can tell, that's like your jam. Yeah. You know. So tell me a little bit about. Um, how you got into that, what your plan is for that, how you use it, how often you post, just just spill it all. Put, put your brain on the table for okay, us with that. <laughs> okay. Um, gosh, I think I've been doing it for a year at least. Um, I just, you know, I think I started with a flower, a picture of a flower, and I was like, it's spring. <laughs> right? It's on Instagram stories. <laughs> Yay! Um, but then I knew that I liked doing video, too. I was trying to do, like, live video on Facebook, and and I felt like that was a little cumbersome because mm -hmm. um, I would have to sit up, and, like, set up shop kind of yeah. thing, and I felt like I had to ha have something to say for a long time. Yeah. But then when I figured out stories, I was like, oh, these are just short little little bursts yeah. of information, and all I have to do is talk for 20 seconds. Yeah. And it only stays on for 24 hours, and then it goes away. Yeah. So it really helped me kind of get over that fear of a camera, too, because it was just short little things where I would just say a little something or post a little something. It's like no pressure. No pressure, yeah. And, it go and you're not expected... Because it's supposed to be behind the heat scenes. That's what yeah. stories are all about. It's like the day in a life. Um, and it's not supposed to be polished. It's not supposed to be like this thing that you take a lot of time on. Um, it's just supposed to be real. And so that was easy for me. Like yeah. I understood that. Um, and so I just started doing it. 
Um, and um, it's so funny because when I broke my leg, which was three months ago, and I decided, okay, I'm gonna go even more like into my stories and into what I'm doing because I want to use this for something. I don't want it to be something that deters my business. Yeah. I want to. Well, I want to use it. You don't. You want to control it, not having it yeah. control you. So I started to get into hashtags and how I could use this to to post and to draw people in. And I started using this hashtag broken leg. <laughs> And you'd be surprised. <laughs> I think I gained on the average another 40 like people following me mm -hmm. on, well, not just Instagram, but my story. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> so instead of just getting like 60, I, you know, now I'm getting at least like 150 or, you know, yeah. each story. And that has to do with a broken leg. Yeah. Um, one, because people were like, what the? happened to your leg yeah. and what's the story it was so compelling yeah. right what's the instagram story behind your leg yeah <laughs> yeah exactly and then the hashtag itself broken leg <laughs> like apparently a lot of people follow that and so i was getting i was hashtag, <laughs> so, and so i was getting like 30 people oh, i don't have one today but there's some i would show you but like 30 people watching my stories to the broken leg hashtag yeah and then people started messaging me and some were okay they just want to know what happened but some people were really creepy i'm going yeah. like way off on a tangent here no it's but um <laughs> Someone wanted me to like take a picture of myself like crutching and send it to them. <laughs> someone wanted me to like such creepers. Someone wanted me to like oh, nail the, them my cast when I they got taken the off. <laughs> and then other people wanted me to like take pictures of my cast with like different socks on. And I was like, you guys are so weird. Oh, so uh. that was fun. <laughs> but but it, it still like got people. So the story you like created yeah, this whole story. The story you know? about the broken leg like yeah. really got people watching me because. It was way interesting, like way more interesting than like maybe selling a house. Like yeah. the fact that I broke my leg and I didn't know it was broken for a week. And um, then I yeah. went in and then I, I mean, I found out that it was broken. I had to have surgery and I'm crying and I put a picture of me crying <laughs> on the stories because it was real and happening at that yeah. time. And just like people just like that whole progression. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do now that my leg's getting better. <laughs> I'm going to have to go break an arm or a wrist or something. <laughs> I mean, I have to do something exciting <laughs> again. Um, but people were so invested in, like, how I was doing and how I was doing business and just, you know, the rehab behind yeah. that. Um, well, and I can think of all kinds of stuff, like, what if, like, planning a European vacation that's a lot of work and a lot yeah. of people don't like how do I plan yeah, I a know. European vacation so like taking people along for each of the steps because all yeah. you ever see is me I mean, from I'm the Eiffel vacation. Tower yeah. you know what I mean but like how, did how did, all yeah. the planning and how did you what site did you use to book your tickets mm -hmm. and what you know just all those different pieces yeah. like you could take somebody on a whole journey with something like that too yeah. I, yeah. or let's say your daughter is in a play yeah. you know like oh she got cast for this part in the play and then like maybe you're helping to like make the costume yeah. or yeah. you're going to helping with rehearsals and and it's like you're leading up you're telling the story and leading up to something yeah. That has a fun conclusion that can yeah. get people excited. Yeah. And then if you're thinking about real estate, like how can you do that with real estate? So we only see the beautiful pictures when the house <laughs> is on the market. Like yeah. this, you know, beautiful yeah. photos and that's all we show. And people love photos of homes, don't get me wrong. But, you know, the behind the scenes, there's so much to talk about. Like yeah. how are you doing that, you know, price evaluation at the very beginning? Um, how are you deciding on those houses? What are you going to say to the seller? You know when you're going over there you know after the listening appointment what were co some of their concerns and how did you address those yeah um, and then as you're getting the house ready like if you're meeting contractors there um, or you know the photography or the staging like what are all those behind the scenes yeah posts I remember one time I posted like this photo that had the photographer taking a photo and my husband was vacuuming in the background because <laughs> it was his brother's house and that, that was like the best photo ever because it just showed like everyone all the boys doing the work to right? get this house ready all hands on deck yeah and it was so behind the scenes and just people could like relate to that wow you know having to get ready like that yeah that's so. awesome so uh so your stories are just just kind of whatever yeah. ad hoc. Yeah. Do you try to get like a certain number of them in a day or is it just, it's just kind of a habit now that you just do it? Yeah, I probably always have some stories 
going. Yeah. Um, it just depends. I mean, honestly, if I have a lot of stuff going on that day, there'll probably be more content because, you know, I feel like there's, there's more, more content yeah. than the day that I'm doing admin on my <laughs> computer. And sometimes yeah. I'll still post about that. Like, you yeah. know, sometimes I'll post about, I've gone behind the scenes about how I do my social media posts on my stories. Mm -hmm. um, and people like that. They want to know what I'm doing and how I'm doing totally. it and stuff like that. But, um, cool. you know, it gets a little old. Just say, here's a picture of my screen over and over again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, and sometimes I feel like it's nice to take a break. Well, not only for myself, but like I feel like it re somehow it restarts um, because I go silent for a day, just take a break. And then when I come back, my first story gets like a whole bunch of new views because... Huh because I wasn't on it for a while or something. Interesting. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but. I don't know, it could be. Yeah, but for the most part, I try to I try to keep it going. Like you can always check in on me and, and see yeah. what I'm doing. Um, a lot of people like the stuff that I post about my daughter as well. Um, I feel like that can sometimes be a sensitive subject. Like do I post my family on my Instagram or do I not? Mm -hmm. And um, I guess for me, I just figure that um, I don't know. I just, I'm going to post all that stuff. It's my life. <laughs> like, I, I don't feel that it is, I guess I don't feel that it's dangerous or people are going to come find us and hunt us down because I have a cute daughter. <laughs> uh, I guess I just don't feel that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, That's awesome. I feel like she's part of my brand. So yeah. She's been with me since she was little and I was trying to just hustle some real estate. <laughs> And now we'll still try to get her to hold signs for me and stuff. She's really not happy about it now. But, She's but like, so I'll take a I'm picture. I'm tired of being yeah. your pawn, mom. So I'll take a picture of her with her mad face holding my sign and post that. Like, yeah. all moms are like, yeah, mine's like that too. Yep. Yeah. So, relatable. <laughs> That's really cool. So uh, let's say that I'm an agent and I really want to get into social media because of all the things we've talked about, right? Mm -hmm. What are some um, tips that you can give to this person to help them like get started and to chill out a bit, right? Yeah. Because I feel like it's, we built, I mean, we just build this up to be such like a huge big thing. Yeah. And one thing I love is just your like attitude about it. You're just chill about it. You're just posting and it's a cool thing. You're not overcomplicating it and you're not overthinking it. And I think that's really great. So if we, do you have a couple little tidbits or anything you can tell people? Um, I think the one thing and that I like to try myself, try to tell myself as, as well is that it takes time. Um, I think the frustrating part um, for realtors is like, so you can go to open house and maybe get one or two leads and maybe turn them into a client into a weekend or a week or two mm -hmm. weeks. Social media is different. You're not going to do one post and it's going to turn into all these clients like coming in and wanting yeah. to be like, will you help me buy a house? Like, <laughs> it's a slow burn. So I like yeah. to think that like, you know, consistently, and this might, this is probably what scares people is that you need to be posting probably consistently for two years before you're gonna start getting brand awareness and mm -hmm. people are gonna know you and, you know, start filling you out. So that's a long time. Um, but even like door knocking and geo farming and stuff, realtors would do that all day. And it also takes time. That also yeah. takes like two years to build. So, yeah. um, it's the consistency, consistency right? Consistency. And yeah. starting now and just knowing like, this yeah. is what I'm going to do. Right. And I'm going to do it because this is a part of my business plan. And also like you're creating something that's, that has legacy to it. Yeah. Like once you have that built, right. Mm -hmm. And it's really working for you and you've put in that time, it takes, it takes less time and effort to keep it going. Yeah. Because then you've got that momentum behind it. Mm -hmm. I think that that's, I mean, that to me is a really big reason to keep it going. Yeah. And another thing I feel like is I think that we, like a lot of industries, are really becoming commoditized, mm -hmm. you know, like a dime a dozen, basically. And yeah. so being able to have people say like, no, no, like Tiffany's my realtor, yeah. like she's who I'm working with. Yeah. I think there's really something to be said oh, for yeah. that, you know. I absolutely feel that. Like, yes, there's lots of other realtors in the market right now. It's such a great market. Mm -hmm. um, and there's technology trying to take over our job. And so it is much harder for me to convert new leads right now who don't know me. Yeah. But, like, the people who do know me or do uh, watch me or, you know, however they still um, 
get information from me, like mm -hmm. they're diehard. They yeah. love me. Like they're like, yeah. Tiffany is my girl and I will never go away from her. Yeah. Um, but if I'm not producing content and if I'm not, you know, engaging with them, which I do a lot through social media, besides just posting content, I engage with like a lot of my past clients yeah. and a lot of my friends. That is such a big piece. Like I almost think, I don't think it's necessarily more important, but I think that engaging with other people's yeah. stuff is as important yeah. as you putting out your own stuff, right? Because we we actually mentioned earlier, like everybody's busy in their own business, yeah. you know? Like I'm doing my own thing. And think about how much we love when people comment on our stuff. Right. Well, that's how they feel too. Yeah. So why don't you make them feel great? People yeah. remember, how we make them feel. Yeah. So why don't you make them feel great by by being a part of their story, yeah. you know? And it's a conversation. You just had a conversation. Yep. And you didn't have to pick up the phone and call. You just had a conversation just with this little chat that yeah. you did or this little comment that you did. Um, do you put time in your schedule to converse, you know, to, to do the engagement piece on social media? Or do you just kind of have it as a habit now when you've got a little downtime, that's just kind of your your jam. Yeah, I kind of just do it when I have some downtime. I definitely do it in the mornings. Um, my daughter, you know, gets up, eats breakfast, watches some cartoons, so I'm mm -hmm. sitting, she wants me to sit with her, so that's <laughs> an easy time for me to go through and just yeah. engage and like with people. Um, another thing I just thought of about like, so if you are just starting your social media, um, one thing is to, your goal, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would tell friends and families or other people who support your business to, when you post something, to go and to not just like it, but um, to comment on it and, and share it, because that's how you're going to get more people seeing it. Um, so, gotcha. like, I've told, sometimes they still don't get it, but I've told, like, <laughs> my assistant and my mom and my dad, like, anytime you, and my, my husband is the worst, I'm like, why aren't you commenting on you're my like, stuff? like, holler. Yeah, I'll be like, I'm the one making money here. Like, you just, all you need to do is comment, say something nice, and comment. Um, but that's how you beat the algorithm, and that's how Facebook knows that your post is important. So, like, tell all your friends, tell your aunt and your grandma who's on Facebook that every time, you know, or Instagram is your aunt. grandma on Instagram? Mine's yeah. not. Um, but every time they see a post, to comment on it. Yeah. Um, and that's going to help people see your post and um, beat the algorithm. Yeah, so you've kind of got, like, your little... Like a little pod. Your little pod of your super fans. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. I think that's a um, that could be a really great play with your vendor partners too. Yes. Right. Yes. Is to get like your group of vendor partners together and be yes. like, listen, we're going to support each other's business because yeah. it's in our best interest to do so, right. and because we all think we're awesome. Right. And so we're going to make a conscious effort. We're going to turn our notifications on. You know, we're going to put people in each other's close friends, etc and just really like yeah. be on top of that. That's a really, that's a great yeah. insight there. Um, I, go, I used to go to Mega Burn, which is like this Pilates studio, and whenever they post something, all the instructors that work there also yeah. post on it, and so they always have a whole bunch of comments and a whole bunch of likes and stuff. And the, it's for their personal pages too, so they all support each other, so they get it. Yeah. They definitely get it. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it drives me crazy when all these people who I know support my business <laughs> and all they give me is a like. And I really want to have a deep conversation with them about how they can better support me, but um, I... And maybe you have that conversation with some people. I have had, yeah. yeah. Someone's helping me do with some of my marketing stuff now, and yeah, she was just liking my stuff, and I was like, can you please comment? It helps with the algorithm. And then I told my mother-in-law that too, and so then two comments, and then I said to my husband, hey, comment on my, so three comments, and it worked. I mean, Facebook was like, this post is doing better than 95% yes, of your other posts. And I'm like, yes, I'm like thanks, husband little. and mother-in-law and assistant. <laughs> yep. You're great. It don't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. Wow. So, yeah. you. There's been, I mean, I'm in my head when we were going through this thing today, I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, that was a good one. Damn it, that was a good one. I'm like oh, super excited to you. like chop this up and so many little mini tidbits and pieces of content. So thank you so much for doing this today. Um, okay. And uh, I hope that we did you right with your first uh, podcast I interview. Mm, I feel so special. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tiffany, again, thank you so much. You shared so much wisdom. I know that uh, 
that are people, you know, that my little luminaries out there are going to get some super value out of this. So, uh, tell people where they can find you, where they can follow you on social media. Yeah. So you can definitely find me on Instagram at Tiffany Danley and it's Tiffany T I F F A N I E Danley D A N L E Y. Uh, that's where I'm most active. If you want to find me on Facebook, it's also Tiffany Danley. Cool. Or TD Realty Group. TD yes. Realty Group is TD. your business page. It's my business page, TD cool. Realty Group. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, awesome. that's where I'll be. Cool. Well, thank you so much. And uh, everybody, I mean, I don't even know what to say except boom. That was an <laughs> awesome episode. So uh, we will uh, see you guys next week.